tonight saying the prayer and also doing the Pledge of Allegiance, that's uh, amazing in itself. This is the first time I've ever been here, and what I want to talk about is the Inglewood Project. I would like for somebody to tell me what that project is all about because it's going nowhere. I went up and down the road up there and talked to the proprietors there, and none of them are happy with it. The parking there is, is uh, just ridiculous. You couldn't get a tow truck through there if you tried. Um, if they're backing out, they're going to hurt somebody. And then parking spots in there. And also the, uh, the buildings around there, it seems that uh, the uh, guys that own the property around there are dissatisfied with the, uh, the city and the big building that you all have here. The windows are all busted out and trashed everywhere, and the back back of it's just it looks it looks like a mess. But yet they have to get their properties cleaned up and looking good, and then they get their uh, license taken away from them, in some cases, for the violations. And what I I made some calls on on the the code violations that the the other people are doing, <coughs> and uh, they told me I was making too many of them. How, how many is too many? You know, I'd, I'd like to know how many is too many. Uh, they can get away with it, but but we can't. I can't get away with it. I would like to. I would like for somebody to tell me that. And the, the decisions you guys you got money everywhere. You got ten million dollars put up for a project, the IPL project, that we've already voted down twice. Use it. Proposition P. <laughs> It's silly. I mean, how many times are you going to tax, you know, tax this? I mean, we just keep on, keep on taxing this. Pretty soon, we're not going to have a check. You, uh, I think it's a socialist movement that we're in, and I think that you guys are going to have a hell of a time trying to get that going. You know, I mean, uh, that's that's what I want to say right now. You know, I mean, I got the American people are fed up with you. They're fed up with this council, they're fed up with independence, they're fed up with the United States government. We're just fed up. And I'll leave it at that. And thank you again for doing the Pledge of Allegiance. That's amazing. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, our next speaker is Jackie Davis, who would like to speak regarding the Englewood District. <coughs> Ms. Davis. I'm Jackie Davis, and I live on 1725 Harvard. I'd like to thank you for allowing me to speak at the city council meeting. I received a letter concerning the Englewood district. Someone paid $6.80 to mail me this letter, so I thought I should at least respond to it. It is my understanding that some people in the district, in this Englewood district, want to charge the people 1% more sales tax. They are saying for improvement. If these businesses want to do this, it should be on their dime, not on the taxpayer. It is also a fact that not all of these businesses want this. There has been some changes in the neighborhood and not for the best. We don't need any more. We're tired of surprises. The City of Independence allowed a large building to go into our neighborhood without our knowledge. It's for events such as weddings and so forth, but we the people have to put up with the noise and the traffic. The answer? in a letter from the mayor was that it was in the art district, but in reality, it is on a residential street. Enough is enough. They've had added some real large wide sidewalks for this district that are not hard to use except for their art fairs, yet the school children have to walk in the street to catch a bus to school. We don't need any more taxations. We all know that so much of the time there is abuse and it in it and lots of waste. Excuse me. I'm asking for you guys to vote against this. There's been enough waste of taxes. You are all here to represent all of the people, not just some of the people. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our next speaker is Andrew Oseman, who wishes to speak on say resolution for medical marijuana. marijuana. Mr. Oseman. Madam Mayor, 
council members and staff, wanted to thank you very much for having me this evening. Um, my name is Andrew Osman. The address that I uh, manage is ca called Crackerneck Plaza Shopping Center, located at 19321 East Highway 40 in Independence at the intersection of 40 Highway and Little Blue Parkway. The reason for me coming before you tonight is not as a medical marijuana uh, advocate, but as a property owner. Um, <clears throat> a couple of months ago, the state uh, of Missouri and uh, residents of this state did approve medical marijuana to be legal. Whether or not you agree with that or not, that is the fact of this state and half the other states in the United States. The key is, and I have to respect the city immensely because it is very difficult to come up with a proper code to protect the residents, the business owners, and make sure that you have a business properly licensed in the city. The key here, and unfortunately, I'm given five minutes or three minutes, and I don't have my PowerPoint presentation tonight, so I provided you a handout of my property in general. Um, the way I interpret the statute through Missouri, and I understand that you approved this statute through independence and had your own rules and regulations, and there are five main points in that, that that you approved, and my understanding is maybe you are gonna reconsider something to that effect this evening on uh, a possible new uh, or revised agenda for that. Um, it doesn't necessarily fit in a box. Every sort of uh, authorization that you could do for medical marijuana in a particular location. Meaning, if I were to go to Independence Center, that would qualify me because I'm around C1 or C2, and there's no residence, there's not a church around there, everything uh, falls into compliance. The unfortunate thing is, there are many others that don't fall within that category, that are zoned commercial, that are either abutting residential, or are far enough away that there's a question mark as to how far away is acceptable. Uh, my property management company came to agreement with a medical marijuana dispensary. We selected them after careful consideration of tens of uh, licenses. We did, the, the, we did the vetting process. We interviewed every single person to figure out who we thought had the best application. But in our situation, we carefully looked at that and said, all right, if we're gonna put them into our shopping center, what is gonna be the effect? Well, we have a very successful uh, compounding pharmacy that's already in there. They distribute to a number of different uh, senior living facilities and mail order uh, facilities across the state. Uh, we have a number of holistic doctors that are in there, both dentist and chiropractic clinics. And we felt out of all our properties that we have in our portfolio, this is the one that we felt is commercial enough of a high-end caliber enough that we would put them in there. So I present to you a zoning map of what is currently through City of Independence. And our property is highlighted on the second page showing two pad sites and a main shopping center. And I outlined the distance between what is classified as, quote, residential in nature through zoning and our property. Even though we've agreed in principle, we still have to go through the process for the City of Independence to get approval. So if you look on this first map, which is color-coded, there's a green section saying R-A. Right you behind have one that, minute. I'm sorry? You have one minute. Behind that, we have a section R6. Excuse me, sir. Yes. How much longer is your presentation? One minute. <laughs> well, I, I would do a motion to extend your time if it's going to be over a minute. It will be three minutes. Madam Mayor, I move to extend this gentleman's time to allow him to complete his presentation. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council Members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? 
Yes. Mayor Weir. Yes. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Mayor. So in here, we have two green sections, a light section and a dark section. That specifically abuts our property. And on the second page, you will see the distances. Those two green properties, light and dark, are number one in the floodplain zone. Number two are owned by Jackson County and the city, respectively. They're walking trails. There is a park there. In my estimation, it probably never would be residential in nature ever because it's in a floodplain. It's next to the Little Blue. But yet, my property is within 500 feet of, quote, residential in nature. And the, the way the code is written currently, it says medical marijuana dispensaries facilities may not be within 500 feet of any residential district or residential dwelling. This distance is measured from property line to property line, not building to building, not per code of, of state of Missouri. By walking the shortest distance, I'm taking the shortest distance from a linear standpoint. The second thing is, on the opposite side, we have at the very edge of Independence, a large green swath. That is also zoned R6. That is a large residential uh, neighbor that has, I believe, one house on there on 11 and a half acres. Instead of measuring building to building or building to house, we're measuring property line to property line the very closest distance. So in this case, the property line, instead of having to walk 1,400 feet to then go up to their property line, which happens to be in, in Lee Summit, get into their driveway and then go up their, their driveway to their house, we take a straight shot and that is 290 feet. It happens to be on a, a, on a cliff that up until this point, we had absolutely no clue that there was actually a home right there because it's hidden by trees and all the, the uh, office buildings surrounding there. So in closing, I just ask for your consideration to look at this point number C, 500 feet, and suggest uh, some sort of language to say, instead of property line to property line, building to building, or in the Missouri State Statute, by walking on a normal course on a normal street to calculate that distance. If you have any other questions, I'm happy to answer them, uh, but I've done my due diligence and, and I hope that uh, you guys would consider this later this evening. And for one last thing, time is running out because my understanding is uh, applications are due next week and you are docked significant points if you are not approved by the city. Thank you. Very good, thank you very much, appreciate it. Um, our next speaker is Jason White, who wishes to speak on Proposition P. Thank you, Jason White, live at 1024 South Forest. Wanted to talk about some of the financial issues around Prop P, garnered from knocking on doors and being at a variety of meetings and being active in this campaign. Number one, a lot of folks have asked, well, why can't we just pull these revenues out of the general fund? And to those folks I've asked, well, did they pay attention to the debate in April and May when this council chamber was full of folks concerned about their health insurance? You all don't have a healthy financial budget. You started the budget process three and a half million dollars in the red and went through quite a debate as you found the balance on what to spend funds on. There obviously is not additional funds to run a no-kill shelter and put additional police officers on the street. If people would stop and pause and compare the revenue in independence to run city government compared with our neighbors of Liberty, Lee Summit, and Blue Springs, they'd realize we are an extremely low tax community. We do not generate the revenue for the level of services that our other suburbs do. And so the ex expectation that you're gonna suddenly find additional dollars for these additional expectations just isn't there. I'll probably not get a smile from some of you, but we're a bedroom community. We don't have very much industry like our big neighbor to the, to the west. So our taxation issues fall on residences. If we had more industry, that might be a different question. That isn't gonna turn around tomorrow. We have to have realities of what the service expectations are today, and that means revenue streams related to, to individuals, to residents, to citizens. 
People have grumped about, well, why couldn't we have used that money from the solar farm that we built out there at uh, Rock Creek? Well, some of those folks don't realize that the charter structures the budget so that things you build under IPL, you couldn't have taken those funds, even if you didn't want a solar farm, and spend them to hire cops or put on the animal shelter. The charter divides those up. It's a wise document. It keeps those funds separate. This, quite frankly, is low-hanging fruit. Fifteen years ago, when I wanted to buy a pair of pants, I went to the store and I paid a sales tax. The fact that society and, and technology has changed, so now I may buy them online, I still should be paying a fair share to support the services that the community affords to me. I'm confident in the oversight process. We started those in 1998 with the streets and park tax issues, and since then literally hundreds of citizens whose <laughs> names aren't published anywhere except occasionally on the website as ser providing service to their citizens have funneled through those. They have a chance to look at the documents, challenge the city staff, ask the questions, and then they report on a regular basis back for the public. That process has worked well. I'm confident that it's gonna work well when we pass Prop PM tomorrow. Talk about the cops for a second. People have said, and I've been surprised at this one, we don't need any more police officers. Now, frankly, that's been pretty darn few because those are, tend to be the naysayers who are just looking for a reason to vote no on anything. But I've been around a while, and for the last 12 to 15 years, we've been recognizing. There's been formal studies, and if you look at the amount of blacked out time for our police officers and the time to get them there for a minor issue, it's pretty darn obvious we need more police officers. The additional 10 is gonna be well spent, then we get into some questions about, well, after we get 30. Well, after we get 30, none of you are here. I'm not here. That's 12 or 15 years from now. I, 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 I'm not going to be up here harping at you all about city issues, and you aren't going to be here listening to me. It's really a non-argument to be sweating what happens to additional revenue 15 years downstream. Because what happened 15 years ago, nobody knew we'd be in this bind today. So we need to give that one a little bit of a thought. The animal shelter is a good program. Uh, I tell you, I didn't get there easily because I grew up in the era of a municipal shelter and it was to protect the citizens. But this community wants and demands a no-kill shelter. I was sitting here a few months ago and there was good debate in the community on health insurance. And I thought, if we didn't have an animal shelter, like some people say, and if we decided to make it back to a municipal shelter, I'd be willing to bet you all a very fine dinner. This group would be louder and more rambunctious and your phones would be off the hook. As I've knocked on doors, this community likes their little furry friends. They expect us to respect and take care of them. It's a value statement. Last door I knocked on yesterday was a gentleman who doesn't have a lot. I made that judgment based on his home and his car and I was a little suspect when I made my conversation. He said, I want a sign. And he was mad, it's Sunday afternoon, and he wants a prop P sign in his yard. And he said, well, it's a little late in the game. We called three weeks ago, couldn't find who to get signs from. And I said, well, why? And he goes, we gotta take care of the animals. That guy did not have a lot, but he made a value judgment. And that's what's gonna happen tomorrow. The citizens will make a value statement on how we're gonna protect my neighbors, kids, the old folks, and the animals in town. You have one but minute. Appreciate your time, thank you. Thank you, um, Our next speaker is Deborah Holmes, who wishes to speak on medical cannabis zoning. Holmes. Hello, um, thank you. I like to um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. It means a lot to me. And uh, also, I wanna thank the mayor for some of the work that she's done for the uh, kids that have grown out of the foster care system and trying to uh, make sure they're taken care of. Um, but right now, I'd like to speak actually as a patient and a disabled veteran who's lived in independence for over two decades. Um, I'm not just a disabled veteran. I've spent 26 years in corporate America. I have a finance degree. Um, I'm not the average person you would think of when you think stoner. Okay, but 
Um, I did serve in the Air Force. I was part of Desert Storm. I lost 14 people from my office. Um, like many veterans, I suffer from PTSD and uh, chronic pain, run the gamut of what the VA threw at me like spaghetti at a wall to see what stuck. Um, until 2008, I thought cannabis was for stoners as well. Um, until my son got in a really bad automobile accident, was in a coma for nine and a half days, had non-combat TBI, and fractured his neck and was up in Creighton University Hospital for two months and spent um, 90 days basically screwed into a halo. And, got, and when he came home, he was using a walker for balance. And uh, I saw actually uh, cannabis actually seemed to stabilize the TBI. And he is a successfully married employed individual who is out in California who is a cannabis patient. And so, you know, fast forward, um, they threw lots of drugs at me. I did not like the side effects. Um, the side effects were part of the reason I walked away from my very successful career at DST um, before they got bought out. Um, I hold this card. I'm a proud medical cannabis patient. And the reason I'm here is that I am the growing face of cannabis and where it's going. I am the biggest growing demographic in cannabis patients. Educated, we work, we're productive. We, we want to get things done. We want our lives back. I ditched six prescriptions and I'm in the process of ditching a seven. And I feel as if some of the zoning that has been proposed is more out of fear, you know, because we did see people going after meth. You know, we were known as the meth capital for a long time. But this isn't meth made in someone's bathtub. This is lab-tested medical product that the voters voted in, and 60% over 60% of Congressional District 5 voted for it. Your constituents voted for it. So when, so when you're actually saying you can't be by Truman Library or you can't be in the historic district, if you look at Amendment 2, part of the process to fill out your application is to prove that you are actually accessible to your patients. So your policy is going against constitutional law. It's basically saying, if you live in this zip code, or you live in this zip code, we, we don't want it there. We voted for it, but we don't want it in our backyard. We don't want tourists to see it. But the, here's the deal, is that 60% plus of the United States is legal now, and your tourists coming here, a lot of them are from legal states. Hiding it from them is not prudent. There are reciprocating things. I mean, we closed our health department recently because of budget constraints, but yet we're strangling ancillary business off of Nolan Road like Hassling Vapor Maven. We're, we need those tax dollars. We need those dispensaries. Y you look at the statistics on how many kids are Title I eligible and independents and what the median income is compared to all of Missouri and the nation, we are behind. We need that tax revenue. We need the jobs that they're gonna bring in. We need that money because we made an oops giving some tips away off of the 40, high, you know, off of the Salsa Road Little Blue Parkway and 39th Street Corridor at the wrong time. And we had famous Dave's leave and we had some other people leave and we need that money. We need those jobs. Our unemployment rate in certain parts of independence is 2% above the national average. This is an opportunity and we need to do it right. I know that we have a long history and a proud history and we're a conservative community, a tight-knit community. 
but we can no longer shun these businesses. We need to embrace them in a way to help the patients like me so that it's not an undue burden and you're not losing my tax dollars when I drive over into Blue Springs, Lee Summit, or Kansas City, Missouri and spend those dollars elsewhere. Why don't we keep them in independence? You have you know, one other, minute. Otherwise, you're going to have delivery service, you know, from and people leaving independence. We already have contraction in certain parts of independence. I I actually sent something ahead of time to Councilman Delucci and uh, with statistics so that you can actually see those stats per zip code. And Jackson County is a dismal 74th in hell in all of the counties of Missouri. You know, 30% of the overdose deaths are actually benzodiazepines people take to go to sleep. It's not just the opiate crisis, it's the overprescription crisis. And we can do something about it, but we have to be open minded. We cannot continue to shun it and say, not in my neighborhood, I'm scared, and, and think that it's going to bring crime. Because actually, if you look at Pueblo statistics, it did not, and they had a net positive effect in 2016 of $35 million in their community. $35 million. They have less residents than we do by like 6,000. So I'm comparing apples to apples, in a, in a sense, as far as community size. So please hear these people out when they're talking about zoning and what it means, and think about it from your constituents' perspective as well, and the burden it puts on us, but also growth and independence and where we want to go with it. I thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Um, our next speaker is um, Jonathan. I'm sorry, Jonathan, what's your last name? Lowe. Lowe, um, who wishes to speak about medical marijuana ordinances. Thank you for allowing me to speak this evening. Uh, my name is Jonathan Lowe. I lease a building off 10809 East 40 Highway. First, I'm here as a longtime advocate of Normal Kansas City, which is a local mar medical marijuana patient chapter, and New Approach. New Approach was a leading drive behind the amendment that was written and is now Article 14 of the Missouri Constitution. I'm here first on behalf of the medical marijuana patients of independence and the business hopefuls who have done their due diligence under the Missouri Register, speaking more specifically to these adopted ordinances. These ordinances are in clear violation of patients' rights under the Missouri Constitution. Secondly, I'd like to speak as a patient, as I am a registered patient in this state. I was personally appalled by some of the comments made by certain council members on protecting independence residents. Medical marijuana patients are not second class citizens. Medical marijuana businesses are not second class businesses. I brought with me my attorney who can speak a little bit more on some of the violations that we have found in the ordinances under Article 14. Her name is Jasmine Abu Kesem. Good evening, Good Mayor day. Weir and members of the council. Thank you for allowing me to be here today and speak on behalf of Mr. Lowe, who is one of the owners of a company called Mantis 9. Mantis 9 hopes to and was planning on being a business that operates in independence with a dispensary facility that will make access to medical marijuana to patients more available. 
Mantis 9 has gone through an incredibly rigorous process of applying, preparing to apply for the license. And in finding a location and preparing that location to meet the state's requirements, it has entered into a lease, which you can imagine involves a huge risk and an enormous amount of time and money. Preventing Mantis 9 from being able to operate a business that it has a right to do under Missouri law is unconstitutional. Specifically, many of the ordinances that have been passed, perhaps not shockingly so, are in direct contravention of the Missouri Constitution on their face. When watching the July 15th meeting where Councilman Doherty and others were proposing passing these ordinances, I never once heard about a study that had been done any type of polls that were taken, surveys that would support this, you know, desire to protect the citizens of independence. Really, where these ordinances came from is an animosity towards and an ignorance of what medical marijuana is. Medical marijuana patients are not stoners, are not hippies running around. They're people like Debbie Holmes, people who deserve to have access to medicine that the state has decided they should have access to. The beginning of Amendment 2 starts with a patient's right to access medical marijuana. Many of the ordinances, as I said, directly contravene the Missouri Constitution. For example, the requirement that there be a 2,500 foot buffer between facilities is nowhere in Amendment 2, nor is it in any of the Department of Health and Senior Services regulations in the Missouri Register. In addition, the measurement of that distance does not comply with what Missouri law states it should be. According to Missouri law, the distance should be essentially the closest way to get from one facility to another that is lawful and does not require trespassing. So that right there tells you that that ordinance needs to go out the door. Second, the ordinance is providing that um, there shall be no consumption on site. That ordinance also violates Missouri law because Missouri law provides facility owners with the right to have a private patient room where patients and their primary caregivers or a family member may consume. But Obviously, that also directly contravenes Missouri law. You have one minute. Excuse me, ma'am, how much longer do you have to speak? I would say a few minutes. Um, I move to extend her speaking time to three minutes. Thank you. Second. So moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Excuse me. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Continue, please. One of the ordinances that poses the largest problem is um, the regulation that a dispensary facility not be within 500 feet of another dispensary facility. The regulations in Amendment 2 are tailored to be able to provide patients that need access to medical marijuana to have you know, those dispensaries as avenues they can get to in means that are not unduly burdensome. Many of these ordinances are unduly burdensome because they make it extremely difficult, if not impossible, for facility owners and patients to exercise the rights that they're granted by Amendment 2. Moreover, I think that there was a statement, a couple of statements made that, oh, well, the city will, or the state will come back and correct us. The state won't come back and correct you, the judiciary will correct you, and that will be because of a plethora of lawsuits that's, that the city will be faced with by not only people such as my client, Mr. Lowe, but by property owners and by patients. And I think that that's something the city should strongly consider. One of the benefits of having medical marijuana businesses in independence is that they will provide you know, much needed tax revenue um, and they will operate ethical businesses that will provide organic, chemical-free medicine to patients that need it. I think that merits considering versus our outdated 
reasons for why we shouldn't, why additional restrictions should be placed on these medical marijuana operations. Finally, you know, I think it should be said that a lot of these ordinances, if not amended, will be in direct violation of several sections of Article I of the Missouri Constitution, which outlines the Bill of Rights. Section 10 says no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of the law. But keeping these ordinances as they are will deprive individuals of property, as well as liberty, being the consumption of medical marijuana that they have a right to do under state law. Second, these ordinances are an ex post facto law, meaning they impair contracts that have been entered into by individuals with reasonable reliance on the state laws and the reasonable expectation that the city is not going to enact regulations that violate those laws. Additionally, Enact, or not revising these ordinances will essentially constitute an inverse condemnation of properties which are already under contract. There are several other things and other ordinances I could address, but I just urge you that I think you've heard a lot from individuals tonight about why these ordinances should be reconsidered. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our final speaker this evening is Casey Phillips. Ms. Phillips, um, your, you requested to speak about comments made by a particular council member. I will um, just reiterate that number three on your agreement to speak before the council that you will not make any personal attack upon either public official or any other person. Um, so feel free to proceed with your comments, but um, please direct them to the council as a whole. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, my name is Casey Phillips. I've been an independence resident for over 14 years. We bought our first home here, which we still live in. Our four kids have been born here. Um, two are in school and two will be in school in the years to come. So we're here for a very, very long time. Um, and funny enough, my husband and I moved to Independence on Independence Day um, in 2005. So it feels like we were made to be here. Um, so much of what I wanted to say, I had emailed uh, Mr. Doherty and um, the mayor a few days after his comment. Um, I hope over the past few weeks, everyone has been able to reflect on this comment about Middle Easterns. As public figures, you know that you are held to a standard of being respectful and appropriate, like all of us should be. Many times when I hear comments like these is out of a space of fear or not really knowing much about a certain culture or people. And sometimes it's just a saying that we learned growing up, but really never understood the um, repercussions that it leads to. Um, a friend of mine, Hassan Latif, oh, yeah, whatever, mm -hmm. sorry, published in an article in the Star um, about this incident, and he says it's worth explaining what's wrong with this statement. Um, his use of the term Middle Easterns and Middle Easterners specifically attributes criminal activity to all members of an ethnicity. This is a textbook example of racism. It's also just plain incorrect. Middle Eastern encompasses many different ethnicities. The Middle East is populated by Christians, by Jews, by Muslims, and other religions. The immigrants running the gas stations, convenience stores, and smoke shops um, that was talked about that come up from areas that extend far beyond the Middle East. Um, and hold on. And my friend also in his article pointed out that immigrants have much to contribute to America and to the city like independence. Um, a recent study by Kansas City's own Kaufman Foundation found that immigrants are, most, are almost twice as likely as native born to become entrepreneurs. Excuse me, I'm sorry ma'am. Yes. I just received notice that there's no audio on City 7 and I wondered if we could just pause for a moment until the audio gets back on. Okay. Okay. I want everybody to hear you. Okay. Let's 
Let's take a five minute recess. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was doing the exact same thing. Yeah, I, Carol sent me three messages saying that no cannabis is delivered. No. I know. I know. No, no, no. I'm sorry, I want to get back. Okay. Um, I asked her about special use permit. I'm uh, going to call the meeting back to order. Really? <laughs> Why not? We're just making um, conditional like they did. Um, give an explanation about the issue with the audio. Um, apparently a council member was notified by Facebook that it was not uh, operating, or I don't know, Councilman Robertson maybe. Um, I want to assure everybody that we had a um, software update that decided to automatically happen um, during 
during the meeting, so um, the entirety of the meeting is recorded and will be available um, for rebroadcast on City 7 and um, on our city website, so be assured that all of your, your comments um, immediately after the, the meeting, we'll make sure that they all get, um, get updated online. So apologies for that. We did miss um, a few things live, but all of that is now rectified so we can um, resume the meeting. And Ms. Phillips, if you'd like to come back up and pick up where you left off. Thanks. Okay, so um, the study found that immigrants are almost twice as likely as the native born to become entrepreneurs. He also states in the article, it's not a great economic policy to vilify the immigrant communities bringing businesses, revenue, and jobs to independence. That's especially true when overwhelmingly ev evidence shows that in comparison to native born populations, immigrants have a lower criminal incarceration rate and their are lower crime rates in the neighborhoods where they live. Immigrants overwhelmingly benefit the communities they adopt. So obviously the comment was insensitive and irresponsible. However, I do believe in growth from these shameful times in our lives. Most of us have said or done very hurtful and sometimes racist things in our past. The most important part of those times um, the most important part of those times when we use language and a, um, actions against a people group is that we learned from it. I am proud to live in independence. I am excited of the dire dire oh my goodness, direction we seem to be going. Um, one way as a resident of the city that I can tell that there are the right people leading us is how they conduct themselves in public and in tough situations and if they are willing to acknowledge their actions and move forward with correcting those errors. I hope that tonight there is an apology um, and a commitment to educate and heal um, ourselves in this facet. Um, leaders that choose to do this are the ones that I tell my kids about and tell them how they should conduct themselves when they make a mistake. So I'll end with another quote from my friend Asan. At the very least, the immigrant Communities living and working in independence de deserve better than to hear bigoted statements made about them at government meetings. These circumstances have provided the city's mayor and city council a critical opportunity to pu publicly affirm that they represent a city, city that is inclusive and welcoming to all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, that concludes our citizens' requests. Um, we have a presentation this evening regarding the Regional Animal Shelter Monetary Donation Fund. Mr. City Manager? Yes, I would ask our uh, shelter director, Christina Heinen, to come up and make a presentation to the council. Thank you. Mayor and members of the council, my name is Christina Heinen. I'm your interim animal services director. Uh, tonight, I'm here to give you a quick update on the regional animal shelter. As you know, three weeks ago, we uh, assumed operations of the shelter. During that time, um, we have done 35 adoptions. We've returned 48 animals to their owners. Um, we currently have, as of today, 91 cats in the facility, and we have 48 dogs that are looking for forever homes. Um, we have tried our best to make sure that the public as a whole did not notice a difference in operations. We've kept the same hours. Um, adoptions are Wednesday through Sunday. We have lost pet services seven days a week. We are there from 7 a.m. in the morning until 6 to 7 o'clock at night, making sure that all the animals are taken care of. And I am happy to say that in the last three weeks, we've had over 80 volunteers come forward and help out, which is amazing. Um, but we also constantly get asked, how can I, you know, can I donate money to the shelter? Can I donate food? Can I donate supplies? What else can I do to help? Um, monetary donations, we are working with the Truman Hartling Community Foundation. They have a couple of different ways um, to donate. You can do a one-time or recurring donation either through their website or through a check. Um, for a check, it's really easy. I know we went ahead and did a, a little mock example because we, we really found that we have to walk some people through it. Um, you would actually make the check out to the Truman Hartling Community Foundation and just in the memo note that it's for the City of Independence Animal Shelter Fund. 
And if you wanted to do it online, they have a very simple process. You would go to their website, which is thcf.org. You would choose to donate now, and then you would select the City of Independence Animal Shelter Fund. They make it incredibly easy, incredibly fast, and I posted about it tonight on our Facebook page. We also take in-kind donations. Um, we take unopened pet food, unopened pet treats, new pet toys. All of those can be dropped off at the shelter any time that staff are there or more than willing to take them. A lot of those donations we don't necessarily use for the animals that are there, but we use them for people who are adopting or people who come in and indicate to, indicate to us that they're having issues making ends meet um, and that they need just a little bit of help in order to keep their animal in their home. So we want to make sure that people who love their pets are able to keep their pets. So whenever possible, if all they need is you know a sack of dog food, we're going to go ahead and make sure that they get that donation. If you guys have any questions, I'm here. If uh, I also put up the email address if there's anybody watching who would like to volunteer, we are always willing to take more volunteers. Thank you. Um, are there any comments or questions for Christina? I have one, Madam Mayor. Are those donations tax deductible? They are. That's why we chose the Truman Heartland Foundation because they make it so easy and make sure that they are a 501c3 and are set up to be. Oh, so it, yeah. it, it doesn't yeah. matter that the ultimate recipient of the money is a city? No. For the way it is set up with the Truman Heartland Community Foundation, my understanding is because they are the ones that are receiving it, they hold it. There's a fee, um, a small fee that they do for managing the money for us, but because the donation is to Truman Heartland, which is a 501c3, it is tax deductible. Okay. And I noticed the hours, which are terrific, Christina, but let's say there is an animal that's a problem and it's 8.30 at night. Our the shelter's closed. What do I do? Well, um, we would love if you're able, depending on what the problem is, if it's just that you found a lost dog, if you're able to give it care overnight, we would love that and we'll be there first thing in the morning. Even though our hours say, in all honesty, that we're there at 11 a.m. to start intaking animals, if you show up at our doors, we're going to be there. If we're there, we're going to help you. Um, if it's an issue where you've come across an animal that is in need, you can always contact um, our after hours line and you'll be connected with police dispatch who will determine you know what sort of emergency you have and call out an animal services officer okay okay thank you mm -hmm. okay. thank you very much um i'm really pleased that we this fund has actually existed for some time yes um it was set up by animal shelter volunteers and animal advocates um several years ago um but it's nice now that we have an opportunity to really reactivate it um for some uh, you know a little bit different purpose than it was originally set up for but still for the benefit of animals in our community um you know i i was not here at our last council meeting um but i did listen to the speaker who was concerned about the ability for for people to spay and neuter their animals sometimes at an expense that they cannot afford which is not only essential to the health of the animal but also to uh, controlling the pep population here in our city um so you know I'm, I'm glad that we were able to get this it's something we've been talking about for some time um is particularly with volunteers but I'm, I'm glad that we were able to move it forward quickly because people are coming to the shelter and saying i i want to help where can i how can I make a contribution? And I think those funds will be very helpful to us in addition to grants that we um, apply for to help with things like spay and neutering and taking care of other needs um, for the pets in our community. So thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Um, our next uh, presentation resolution is for our employee of the month, Madam City Clerk. Whereas the City Employee Recognition Program recognizes outstanding performance by employees of the City of Independence, and whereas an employee committee selects the Employee of the Month for exhibiting the qualities and ideals that best represent public service, and whereas the Employee Recognition Committee has selected Leah Palmer, Event and Education Program Manager in the Parks, Recreation, and Tourism Department as the Employee of the Month for August 2019, the City Council of the City of Independence, Missouri joins in recognizing Leah Palmer as the City of Independence Employee of the Month for August 2019. Okay, thank you very much. I would um, entertain a motion for uh, approval of the resolution 19767. So moved. Second. So I moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council Members Huff? Yes. 
Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Dean Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Leah Palmer has been with the City of Independence at Parks, Recreation, and Tourism for one year and nine months as event and education manager at the National Frontier Trails Museum. Leah says that what she likes most about her job is finding new and exciting ways to share history with the public. At the museum, they have the opportunity to reach a really broad audience, and that is challenging, but also very rewarding. Leah says as far as career goals as a historian, her goal will always, to be, always be to work in a museum setting as she can see herself running an educational department of a larger museum or historic site, but would like to keep an emphasis on research and writing, be that publishing articles or working on exhibits. The most valuable lesson Leah says she has learned in her career is that flexibility is everything. <coughs> Things rarely go as planned and the ability to change course quickly and efficiently is a useful skill in any job. Leah says there is no such thing as a typical day. Some days she spends lending, leading educational tours, others researching, and still others meeting with community partners to find fun new ways to engage with the public. Leah says to her, the history in Independence is what makes this place special. Independence, Missouri is in nearly every elementary school textbook. Not every town can say that. As a new mom, Leah's current hobbies largely involve stroller walks and making up silly songs. But in general, Leah says she loves city life. Her husband and she like to check out local restaurants, events, and shows whenever they can. Please join me in recognizing Leah Palmer as the August 2019 Employee of the Month. Uh, this takes us to our consent agenda, Mayor Pro Tem. Mayor Weir. Oh, I'm sorry. Nope, no one more. Hold that thought. Um, we do have a proclamation this evening for the Harry S. Truman Chapter of the Missouri Society Sons of the American Revolution, 35th anniversary, Madam City Clerk. Whereas the Independent City Council greatly esteems those whose efforts at preserving the past benefit the present and future of this community. And whereas the Harry S. Truman Chapter of Missouri Society, Sons of the American Revolution, was established as an organization at Van Horn High School in Independence, Missouri on July 7th, 1984, and was officially presented its charter at a meeting held at the Howard Johnson's in Independence Charter 30 years ago on August 4th, 1984. And whereas the Harry S. Truman Chapter members have documented they are descended from patriots and meet regularly to per, to, per I don't know why. Perpetu Perpetuity. Perpetuity, okay. <laughs> the memory and the spirit of the men and women who achieved American independence promote the development of an enlightened public opinion and foster patriotic citizenship. And whereas the members' purposes initiated by the 34 chapter members, patriotic, historical, and educational, continue to be represented through the chapter's engagement in local, state, and national projects. And whereas the Harry S. Truman chapter honors outstanding law enforcement and fire safety officials, has youth programs which recognize ROTC cadets and outstanding Eagle Scouts and conducts essays, oration, and poster contests annually. And whereas on August 10th, 2019, the members and officers of the Harry S. Truman chapter of the National Society of the American Revolution will celebrate the local organization's 35th anniversary at the regular chapter meeting at Woods Chapel United Methodist Church in Lee Summit, Missouri. Now, therefore, Eileen and Weir, Mayor of the City of Independence, Missouri, celebrate with the Harry S. Truman Chapter of the Missouri Society Sons of the American Revolution. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, Mayor Pro Tem, consent <laughs> agenda. <laughs> Mayor Weir, I move to approve the reports and recommendations of the city manager. Second. It's second. been moved and seconded. Are there any items anybody put? Yes, Madam forward? Mayor. Yes. 19775. 19775. Madam Mayor. Yes. 19771 and 19772. 
Okay. And item number five, Madam Mayor. And Madam Mayor, if I yes. may, 19774, please. Okay. <coughs> Any others? Okay. Um, Madam State Clerk, we call the roll on the consent agenda minus resolution 19775, 19771, 19772, item number five, and 19774. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Um, Council member Huff, 19775. Yes, I would like to postpone this indefinitely. Motion to second. And motion second to postpone indefinitely. Is there any discussion? Yes, Madam Mayor. Yes. I understand that over a hundred resumes have been received by the city and a day and a half of interviews have been given and the subcommittee is ready to make a recommendation on the hiring of a clerk. I asked the clerk <clears throat> because I, I was originally again spending the money. And everybody in this room should know I am the cheapest person up here. <laughs> I do not spend money frivolously. I asked the clerk, how are you making out? Are you making it? Are you, are you doing it? And she says, I'm, sla I'm slammed. I'm swamped. I can't keep up. I don't know what I'm going to do. So I am against postponing it. I think we discussed this as a budget amendment. I strenuously objected to the spending of the money because I believed at that time it was a waste. I have since discovered it's not a waste. We've gone forward. We're almost ready to pull the trigger. And yet, yet again, this council at the last minute is changing its mind for no reason other than I think I'm, I want to change my mind. I am so against tabling this. I am voting no. Okay. Um, <laughs> Madam Mayor. Yes. If we can for a point of clarification, perhaps, if we postpone this, that means this money will stay within the budget? Yes. 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 And we will fill the position? Yes. yes. Correct. Perfect. Yes. Post, uh, Madam City Clerk, will you maybe explain what postpone indefinitely results in? Well, typically when we postpone indefinitely, we do it to another meeting. But since you're not setting a time, then it's just kind of out it's, there and dead. Yeah. Yeah. And Basically so dead. will an offer be extended to a person from this committee for the assistant city clerk position? That's my question. Well, I wouldn't want to speak for the clerk, but I do believe you intend to make an offer on that position. That's my intent. Soon. This week. Thank you. <laughs> okay. There is a motion and a second to postpone indefinitely. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Because you're making a motion, or rather an offer of employment, yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? No. Mayor Ware? Yes. Um, motion passes. Uh, Council Member Doherty, 19771. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm on the uh, interview committee for this. Usually I've got a very, very flexible schedule, can get off at any time, but the current project I'm on has some very strict uh, deadline dates and was not able to get their time and my time together. All I'm asking is that we could uh, postpone this to the next regular meeting and I will be able to get the interview done. Okay. So uh, that's all. I would just like to postpone it till the, the next council meeting, regular council meeting. So my motion is to postpone it. Seven, seven, one. one. There's a motion to postpone for second. two weeks and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? No. Robertson? No. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Uh, motion passes. Council member uh, Doherty, 19772. It, it's the same thing. I've got these lined up. Uh, I'm not able to, we got it done in the deadline, but we'll have it done next week. And we'd like to do it the same time we do the 771, just at the next, bring this back up at the next regular council meeting. Okay, so there's a motion to postpone till the next regular council meeting. Second. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? I'd like to know how long these vacancies has, have existed because if I remember correctly, it is months. Which 
Which one? The Planning Commission. We have had two vacancies on that Planning Commission for months. Madam State Clerk, I don't. I'd have to go and look. Heather Wiley's is recent. Um, that's a reappointment, correct? That's the reappointment, and I'd have to check and see what the other Planning Commission vacancy is. Madam Mayor. Yes. <clears throat> Um, the committee that interviews and looks at these appointments is a rotating committee. Correct. Um, the Lucy and I and Council Member Doherty were on that rotating committee for this rotation. Mm -hmm. we, we attempted several different times and dates and, and there was none that fit with Council Member Doherty's schedule at the time and so we were told to go ahead and meet. And so we met, and the two of us agreed. So two out of the three have already agreed on these appointments. So I, it's a rotating committee. I won't be on it again for quite a while. Um, the two of us had already agreed on these appointments, so I feel like the council ought to support the two that were able to meet and decide on these appointments tonight. And so I would like to reconsider 771, and I'd also like uh, support from the rest of the council for our work in discussing these appointments and, and passing these tonight. Is, were these uh, individuals all interviewed? No. There were, there were quite a number, if you interviewed everybody, but a number of these people had, had applied for several different committees, and so we considered all of those. Will the same subcommittee be the one selecting these people, or are we going to be off the subcommittee? I believe that all council member Doherty is asking for is as a member of the committee that wasn't able to meet it that he'd just like an opportunity to interview them and right the simple as that can, can so it'd be the same design. three yeah, yeah. there's hey, a motion you know. and a second um to postpone 19772 till next council meeting is there any discussion on the motion hearing none please call the roll council members huff yes Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? No. Robertson? No. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Um, seven, seven, the motion passes. Councilman Robertson, did you want to make a motion to reconsider? No. Okay. Um, Councilmember DeLucy, item number five. Yes, this is council action to uh, purchase some computers for cars for the police department, which I have no problem with, but I wondered why we're adding why are we buying six additional computer mounts when we're not buying that many computers? That just doesn't make any sense. I didn't know if it was a typographical error. I mean, I don't know how much mounts cost, but why would we do that? Uh, Councilwoman, uh, Chief Halsey had to step out to deal with the matter, um, oh. so I don't have him at my disposal to help answer that question at the moment. Okay. I apologize. Uh, I don't know it's the case, but... Uh they could break. I don't know. And that I, I would assume that the... Like a true public servant, here comes Chief Short. <laughs> here <we are. laughs> uh, obviously, I'm not with the police department, but since we do the same kind of situation, that having extra mounts allows for us to transfer things without having to wait the time to unmount it out of one and then mount it in another one. It's so that things can go on at simultaneously at the same time. Does that make sense? So if we have one car that maybe is being decommissioned, we can build the one with the other mount and then transfer the computer as soon as it's ready. That way we're not taking a vehicle out of service to start that. Okay. I mean, that's pretty typical of doing okay. that. We do similar types of things with the fire trucks as well. Okay. Is that common sense? Yeah. yeah okay. For me, I mean, I, not for everybody. <laughs> That's right. Are there any other questions on item number five? Council Member DeLucy? Move approval of five. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council Members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Item number five passes. Uh, Council Member Perkins, 19774. Thank you, Madam Mayor. 19774 is directing the uh, city manager to do all things necessary to place the compre men comprehensive mental health building on the market. 
uh, Mr. City Manager, we do have a um, purchase offer to us as the city. How will this hinder in any way for us to uh, activate and formally go into, uh, to be able to respond to that um, option to purchase CMH building if we were to move forward with this action? Sure, um, Councilmember Perkins, I believe that um, we would be able to still negotiate with the, um, the group that has submitted a, a proposal to us to acquire that. Um, you know, I think it's a good form here to provide the assurance that we can negotiate with them in good faith while also, uh, if for some reason that potential purchase offer were to fall through, uh, work a simultaneous track of providing um, a listing for that. So. Um, I, I, I believe the proposal that's come through has a lot of merit to it, a lot of validity, a lot of specificity around it. I think there's a few details that need to be ironed out before we can put something before the council to contemplate. Um, but that first offer through the door is one that um, has a lot of value to it and excited to negotiate with that group as well. well I'd like, <clears throat> I like to make sure that this proposal that has been brought to the city sure. that we take a strong look at. Sure. This is from the community that is out there, the stakeholders that are out there who live and work and um, have a strong desire to see Inglewood go to the next step. We purchased that building. I don't know if Mr. Hart is still here. We purchased that building away from uh, Mr. Clint Bars several years ago because he was not wanting to do much with that building, if at all. So we acquired it so we can have and take control of it so we can have the flexibility to, to do the right uh, purchase, purchase agreement with a developer, and I think we have one here on the table that would work fantastically there. As with listing your home or business for sale, there's a little bit of lead time into paperwork and getting it you know, on the market and such. Um, so that process would take some time. The process of negotiating with the, uh, the respondent who sent something in can begin in earnest. Um, so I think we can put that as our first priority. Well, I hesitate to to vote for this that Councilwoman DeLucy has put forward, but I need, and I'm getting the assurance from, from you that this will take first precedent, the first proposal given. As what I would treat this as, um, I, I, again, the proposal has come in, um, it's very intriguing and has a lot of merit to it. Um, I would treat the resolution that we have here as our safety play, that if for some reason that weren't to work out, we couldn't come to terms, uh, the council would deem it ill-advised. We've got this backup plan to have it listed and um, marketed to other potential suitors. Okay. I move for approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yes, ma'am, Madam, Madam Mayor. Yes. This city, 18 months ago, spent $169,000 on this building. We did that because it was a dangerous building. It was blighted. We have sat on this for 18 months. I have been asking to put this on the market for sale for cash for the highest obtainable price, not as a backup plan. This city is spending $180,000 on an election tomorrow. That is an asset that I know is worth at least $169,000. I believe the appraisal came in higher. I do not want it to be a backup plan. I want this building on the market for sale for cash for the highest obtainable price. These people have been making offers for months. There is no firm offer. I want the city manager to understand this is an offer. I want it on the, on the market for sale for cash for the highest obtainable price. Um, just, to, just to clarify, the, we do have a firm offer that's come in from this group. There's a lot of specificity about purchase price, about how they intend to use all four floors of that building. Um, I do have some uh, questions that I would like to line out with them about some of the um, expectations they have about the, um, the city's um, relinquishment of that building. That's why we don't have anything on the agenda quite yet for you to vote. That just came in uh, midweek, uh, last week for us on that. Um, but we intend to accelerate uh, that to flesh that out. Um, but I, I just did want to clarify, I would treat that as a, a, a pretty firm offer that has come in. Mr. City Manager, do you understand? Offer it for cash for the highest obtainable price. I understand responding to the majority of the council, so I'll take my direction um, however you guys want to give it. 19774, Madam Mayor, is very clear. A resolution directing the city manager to do all things necessary to place the comprehensive mental health building on the market. 
That's my resolution, not a backup. It's been moved and seconded uh, to approve 19774. Madam, Madam Mayor, if I may. Yes. To, to move forward with the comments the councilwoman made, um, we did purchase that because it was a blighted building, because there was no movement made there. It was a small step, and I would almost say a big step, that the city has taken a direction to do things differently in all aspects of our city. And that had been an eyesore for quite a few years with no potential movement at all. Okay. The city, the city council was gracious enough to take those steps that they have not done before to acquire that building so we can have that under our control so we can do what is the best for that area over there. We have had a numerous amount of uh, active residents there, community leaders there who have spent hundreds if not thousands of hours donating them t their time and their expertise to try to move the whole area forward. If you are wanting to have for the, for the top dollar that possibly can be given out of there as opposed to the dollar amount that we have purchased into that, then I think we need to, and I would ask my council members to vote against this and that we work with the proposal that is given to the city manager and that is for the purchase price of the purchase price that we purchased that building for. I think that shows a good faith effort by the city that we are community pro partners there and they, we want to see that whole area develop. I think that is the best way to move forward with this. I think we give the, uh, this offer its due diligence. We let the city manager's office go through it, weed out their concerns, make a counter proposal. This is how the whole song and dance is. Make a counter proposal back to um, the English Arts Missouri nonprofit group. Let them have discussions with the city manager. And if we find out that there is no fire where the smoke is at, then I am 100% with you, Councilwoman. But it, until then, I would strongly re recommend that uh, my colleagues vote no on 19774. So we're going to wait and not get money for an asset. Instead, we're going to just keep spending money. This has happened to this council repeatedly. Yes. Uh, the reason we bought this was so that we could move forward in that community. The councilman brought it forward and we did it to improve the site. I would go along. The man in the trenches should be supported by his council. Uh, you've done this. But if we were to approve this, I want it to be a fair and level playing field. I don't want anything else being put above in any way. If we approve this and it's put on the market, I want a fair market value and I want it done that way. Now let's either go ahead and let the man who's been doing the fight get what's due to him in his district or we put it on the market. I represent the whole city. I am a council person at large. Every district is my district. I have 117,000 people to worry about. We have been fooling around for months. Put the silly building on the market, tell the world it's for sale. If we don't get an offer from anybody else, guess what? The guy gets it. Or we may get an offer for $200,000. That sure would go a long way in our economy right now, people. And that's what I want to do. The decisions made here affect the whole city. It's not just one thing. Uh, but what I'm saying here is <laughs> it's an either or in the decision. Madam Mayor, yes, Councilman. if I may, I would be all for your, your thoughts, uh, Councilwoman, but we will be getting the purchase price back that we put into the building. If we were going into negatives, I, I may have second thoughts there with you, but we would be put, get, receiving the money back that we put in. So we would, be, we would be breaking even, if you will. And also, this is important enough to the community there that this shows good faith effort into our wanting to revitalize the Inglewood and the art district. So we're not losing any money. We would actually be saving money by moving forward with this 
uh, purchase, uh, this bid purchase, by getting it out of our hand. So we have a good opportunity to work with our friends, our neighbors, people who put tens, uh, hundreds, and thousands of hours into the community to help move this forward. So I think we have a good opportunity here that we should not squander. And putting it on the market is not gonna squander a thing. Madam Mayor. Yes. So I, I don't see that there's any conflict uh, between the two. Obviously we have had this recent offer this week which is not fleshed out with details uh, and that still has to be uh, discussed and looked at with whoever this this group is but obviously they can be put on any any sort of uh, sale contract as an exclusion and that discussion can ensue very quickly hopefully and they would know that the that the property is going to be listed which may perpetuate the sale quicker anyway and so I, I don't think these two are exclusive I think actually um, instead of putting off us going and putting this on the market this will put it on the market and may perpetuate the other um, person the, of interest to go ahead and purchase it quicker so I would uh, I would support the resolution and and John um, and, and Karen I don't think it's going to to be a conflict between the two so thanks Mr. City Manager, um, in light of Councilman Robertson's um, suggestion or observation, um, if we were to enter into a some sort of a relationship with a broker, um, and assuming the brokerage fees that would accompany that, if they were indeed um, uh, successful in finding an appropriate buyer and with an appropriate development plan, um, would it be possible to um, write into that an exclusion for this group that there would be no fee um, if we were able to negotiate directly with the interested party? And what is our opportunity? What I don't want to see happen is put this on the market, have just anybody come buy it with no plan, and put us right back to where we started. So can you um, please explain to me from our past experience in selling city property what our um, what our frankly you know what are our options and our our leverage in ensuring that we get an appropriate price but also that we get an appropriate buyer with a um, acceptable use that aligns with the independence for all strategic plan that this council has adopted sure so we can um, partner with a broker um, as councilman Robertson <coughs> referenced um, we, we can work up some exclusion terms on that I'm confident that we can we can get that and, um, where we feel comfortable with it um, let's say for example this other group that has brought forward a proposal that were to fall through for some reason um, another group decides they want to bid on the building um, we can have conversations with them about you know not just price but um, how they intend to um, develop that building um, what timeline they intend to develop it on um, we can probably try to work up some conditions on that um, to the extent possible. Um, so I'm confident that we can um, get to the outcome that makes sure that that building, which I, I believe um, I speak for the council when I say we acquired that because we knew it was essential to the redevelopment of that area, we could make sure that it's um, um, done in a way that's timely, uh, doesn't just fall into hands where it sits idle for another you know, period of time or have some sort of um, adverse impact to the area. I, I believe we can get to that same aspect um, through a broker, but also the exclusions for us to, to work with the group who does have a foot in the door at this juncture. So, um, Councilmember DeLucy's um, resolution, this would direct the city manager to bring forward that documentation that would then be approved by the council, the terms of that. Yeah, that so if um, some other outfit decides they're gonna you know, be the highest bidder and this other group, you know, whatever, their exclusions doesn't work out, that would still come back to the council for final approval. There would be a final vote on, on all of that. So Councilmember Perkins, um, under those, that scenario, including the active group, is excluding them um, from, the, from the process and outline specifically that we have the right to refuse any 
offer, if it does not align with the vision of the Englewood Arts District and the strategic plan, would you be comfortable moving forward with this resolution? I would feel more comfortable that we, this was not approved and allow the, um, the give and take between these two to go forward. I think we're almost there. Okay. And Mr. City Manager, I just want to clarify, you made a statement that you're speaking for the council that we bought it to advance that area. We bought it because it was a dangerous building. And we have been sitting as owners of a dangerous building for 18 months. And this resolution will move it and move it quick. And that's why I want the resolution to be approved tonight. Okay, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? No. Perkins? No. Doherty? No. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? No. Mayor Weir? Yes. Um, resolution fails. Um, this takes us to our public hearings. Our first public hearing is for the industrial development project, Sir Speculative Industrial Buildings. This is a full public hearing. Mr. Canal. Yes, Mayor, members of, of the council. Tonight uh, on the agenda you have the uh, Van Trust real estate that proposes to develop two Class A industrial buildings. The total, uh, total square footage of those buildings is about 550,000 square feet. Again, that's built over two Class A buildings. The project is located on 34 acres. Uh, it's located north of Artie Mize Road between Jackson Drive and Little Blue Parkway. Uh, each of the, the buildings will be set up for flexibility where they can um, accommodate different size of tenants, uh, as well as a variety of uses, which will include light industrial, storage, warehousing, distribution, and manufacturing. They are seeking a uh, Chapter 100 tax abatement. Uh, the proposed term of the abatement is 20 years. In addition, Van Trust is seeking sales and use tax um, tax exemption on construction materials used for the project. Uh, the total of the tax abatement over the 20 years amounts to 20% of the uh, project. Um, included in your packet is the evaluation evaluation sheet indicating how this proposal. Uh, meets the city's recently adopted economic development policy. We have Mark Randall here to answer any questions in regard to the economic development policy, and we have David Martin here from Gilmore Bell to answer any questions regarding uh, the legal and financial aspects of this, this project. Finally, we also have the applicant is, is here for additional information. So that concludes my, my presentation, and we're here for any questions. Okay, thank you very much. This is a full public hearing, so we will open it up. If there's anybody here wishing to speak in support of this project, please come forward. Good evening, Mayor Weir, members of the council. Uh, my name is Tom Lesnick. I serve as president of the Independence Economic Development Council. Our offices are at 210 West Truman Road here in Independence. Um, I speak tonight in favor of the Chapter 1 uh, bond application uh, by Van Trust. Uh, as you've read, this is 550,000 square foot of, of new industrial development in our community in the Little Blue Valley. Um, industrial development and the, and the development of new industrial space for our community has been the number one priority for the EDC for a number of years. Right now, I'll share with you some numbers. Our industrial vacancy rate is 3.9%. If you look at that 3.9% of, of what is um, a number of 22 million square foot of industrial space in the community, um, of that 3.9%, most of that space is outdated. Uh, it is not modern space that advanced manufacturing considers uh, uh, very marketable. And so we don't have the opportunity that we should have uh, to attract jobs uh, and employers to this community. Uh, space like this not only is, is good to attract uh, new employment opportunities for our residents, it also gives us the opportunity for existing companies to, to help retain them, to keep them here in our community. Uh, it provides space as they outgrow existing facilities to stay here in Independence. So it, it serves a number of, of needs, serves a number of things. I'll, I'll also point out that um, you know, this falls within the Independent School District uh, boundaries uh, during the incentive review committee discussion. 
it was pointed out that even with the incentive being offered, um, the school district uh, revenues from this will be, um, I believe, three, uh, 300 percent more than what they're getting today. Uh, this is a win-win for, uh, for everyone involved, and I would ask for your support of this project. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else wishing to speak in support? Is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Public hearing is closed. Madam State Clerk. Bill number 19046, an ordinance approving a plan for an industrial development project for speculative industrial buildings authorizing the City of Independence, Missouri to issue its taxable industrial development revenue bonds in a principal amount not to exceed $37,150,000 and authorizing certain documents and actions in connection therewith. Second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Just one question or two. Last time we discussed this, um, I asked if the city's bond rating or uh, yeah bond rating would be impacted if it went belly up and Van Trust didn't um, pay on the bonds and I was told I think that we're okay am I right you're correct so where it says that the bonds and the interest will be limited obligations of the city that limited obligations term is what's scaring me what does that mean um, what that refers to is that these aren't um, the, the, the city's not backing these bonds so the city won't be on the hook to pay the debt service if for some reason revenues fell short to um, meet those payments the annual payments so we're not subject to annual appropriations where the city would have to come up for the shortfall for those okay and so it does not affect our bond rating i understand we won't have to pay the money right but will it affect our bond rating that's my concern no ma'am okay thank you would you like to can we have bond counsel come up and join us? sure um mind? dave martin from gilmore bell <laughs> thank you so that limited obligation language means that the obligation to pay is solely from the payments that are made by the company under the lease. Okay. As we described in the last meeting, the company intends to purchase the bonds itself. So it in effect owes that obligation to itself. Right. So there's not a circumstance in which a default by the company would turn into a default by the city that would rise to the level of the monetary significance that is reviewed in terms of affecting a bond rating. Okay, that was my is, question. It's not the same type of bonds <coughs> as the city holds ratings with respect to where it actually does have some obligation to make a payment. Well, and as you and I discussed last time, we may not be obligated to make certain payments, but we tend to make them anyway. I just want to make sure if that, that if this thing went belly up, it does not affect our rating, our bond rating. That's my concern. Right, and, and the difference there is this type of bond, there's no circumstance in which the city would ever be asked to make a payment, and so it doesn't affect the rating with respect to bonds where the city could be looked to to make a payment. And is that because it's a 353 or because of this agreement? It's because, well, it's because of the way in which these Chapter 100 bonds are structured. So there is a circumstance in which, through the Chapter 100 structure, a city could actually borrow money on behalf of another entity, which would look more like uh, a bank financing or what we think of as a true financing. This buy your own bond structure is different from that structure in which there isn't really money being borrowed to finance the project through the bond structure. Okay, thank you. Okay. <coughs> Mayor, yeah. Madam Mayor. I'm sorry, I can't see down there tonight. <laughs> just, I just wanted to, it's not a question for you. Um, I just wanted to say how fortunate we are in this city to have Van Trust come and, and have the opportunity to build this new industrial space. This uh, could be a watershed year for independence. This potentially could start the ball rolling and bring in all sorts of new businesses and jobs to independence. And this, this should be one of the most important votes for the city council this year, in my opinion. Thank you. Uh, yes, Councilman. As of last week, I want to thank you again and uh, for going over that again, for having it said again, mm -hmm. for being there again. And when we had the other offers that we refused, when these are the things that we found we didn't want and you came forward to us, we certainly appreciate it. And what you brought is highly, highly acceptable. Thank you. 
Hearing none, please call the roll. Councilmember Member Suff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Ordinance passes. This takes us to our next public hearing for the formation of the Englewood Community Improvement District. Again, this is a full public hearing. Yes, Mayor, members of the council, we have the property owners in the Englewood area who have who are proposing a community improvement district, also known as the CID. Um, the CID covers the Inglewood Arts District and includes properties at the intersections of uh, Winter Road and Lexington, as well as the property uh, at the intersection of Truman and Winter. Uh, the CID is proposing a one cent uh, sales tax on all retail sales within the CID bound boundaries. Uh, as part of the petition, uh, they have provided a five-year plan showing that the funds are, are to be used for public improvements um, within the districts. This could include things such as streets, streetscape amenities, signage, banners, uh, landscaping, public artwork, maintenance, as well as some private improvements. The petition mentions about the rehab of privately owned businesses. This would be through a, uh, di a district matching grant program. Uh, the petition has been certified that it has been signed by more than 50% of the property owners and more than 50% of the assessed real property valuation. Uh, the CID was reviewed and recommended approval by the uh, Economic Development and Incentive Commission on July 17th. Uh, we have Mark Randall here who's able to answer any questions in regards to the Economic Development policy and we have uh, David Martin with Gilmore Bell here as, as well. So that concludes staff's presentation. Uh, we also have the applicants here uh, in case you have any questions of them. Okay, thank you. Again, this is a full public hearing. Um, I would like to invite anybody wishing to speak in support of this project to please come forward. Movement, I didn't know who was going to go first. Yeah. Okay. Lucky me. Uh -huh. um, Madam Mayor, members of the council, Tammy Parsons, 11100 East Winter Road. I'm here to speak on behalf of the Inglewood Community Improvement District, commu uh, the CID, Community Improvement District, and I also like to thank Community Improvement Difference. Being a part of the grassroots of Western Independence Community, please let it be known we want to be successful. We strive to be self-sustainable, safe, clean, fun, and memorable. We are where the arts live in independence. A major ingredient for success is partnerships. Partnerships between the community and our city. When working together, anything is possible. The CID is a 1% retail sales tax is a major ingredient that we need in our community's toolbox. Money. Money is a funding tool. It creates good in and for communities. You have to have it. The Inglewood Community Improvement District needs it. Having this tool will provide fuel to collaborate with other available opportunities, matching grants that also have interest in building better blocks, better communities. I speak of the importance of the matching grants because the funds need to go as far as they can. What this CID will generate annually is approximately $34,000. Having some skin in the projects needed and matching funds CIDs are very successful. They work and could grow to much larger possibilities for the community needs. We need, we need it, our community needs it, residential and commercial, a tool that will make the community's visions become realities, creating community pride. Currently, um, currently celebrated by our community working together are our monthly art walks, holiday lighting and sleigh rides, the US flags that hang down the parkway, the heart-to-heart -heart connection that you've seen, 
partnering in the past with communities and forming the NID, the Neighborhood Improvement District. The light poles, that's what the NID did. We taxed ourselves to have that. In 2013, collaborated with Mark, the city, and the EBA um, for sidewalks on the north and just finished sidewalks on the south. The KC 150 brought trees to our parkway. Pu public improvements currently needed, we believe, are signage, like the one on the front page of On the Roll Redevelopment Plan. You know that picture that's on that page? That's our sign. We've had that sign for 10 years, friends. We've had no money to do what we need to do with that sign. This would help visions become realities. We also need streetscapes amenities, but we need maintenance with that too. We, need, we would like public artwork, but there's maintenance that this could help with too. Landscaping with maintenance, we need to slow down the traffic that comes through our area. There will always be needs for a better community. The Inglewood Community Improvement District needs this tool. We are passionate people who choose to be a part of good in Western independence. People help support what they help create. Guests of many businesses within the Sid area deserve better and they are thrilled to shop and support local arts, thrilled that they are a part of building a better community. A destination for all to live, work, play, and visit. As a member of the Inglewood Community Improvement District, I support this, Sid, and I hope that you can too. Thank you for the time spent and for, con and for the consideration in approving this Community Improvement District tool, and thank you for considering the recommended Sid board I am grateful to be a citizen of independence. I am grateful for my friends, both the forever ones and for the new ones. I am grateful for my partner, Darlene. My vision is to all grow old together in a community that we celebrate. I am grateful for the officers that keep my community safe. I am grateful for our 911 dispatchers and our first responders. I am grateful for the tribe of, pe of people who truly inspire my fuel. Mayor Weir, City Council, City Manager, staff, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Is there anyone else wishing to speak in support of this project? Please come forward. Good evening. My name is Ann Inahosa, and I live at 1616 South Overton, which is far about four blocks from the Inglewood Art District. And I moved there because I loved the Inglewood Art District before I even was involved in it. I would come up there and wander around and enjoy what was there. I can't add any more to what Tammy has had to say. She did a beautiful, thank you for that, of explaining what we're all about and that this community is a community that wants to work together, live together, grow together, and we can help ourselves to do that by your passing the SID. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. Is there anybody else wishing to speak in support? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Thank you, Davis. Mm -hmm. They neglect to say all the noise that goes on over there every time they have something. They neglect to say the uh, traffic that they have. You can't make a left turn on Winter Road because all them people are parked there. The noise is terrible at times. They block your driveway, they don't care. I'm against this. They don't tell you about all the bad things, they're just telling you what they want. You're supposed to support all of us and we don't want it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else wishing to speak in opposition? Public hearing is closed. Madam State Clerk. Madam Mayor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I have a couple house cleaning things, or actually one house cleaning thing, um, and also a point. This is not a new concept. 
um, trying to put a CID together in Inglewood. This has been kicked around uh, for about a decade now. So this is not a new thought or a new plan. We have a, a great group of folks, um, community activists, community leaders, uh, the Inglewood community, the art district. They have rallied together. We've been working on this for approximately about a year, maybe it's just a tad over. And the, what this does, the city council will give approval to form this district, which is just one step in the process, but is a very important step in this process. And as we're looking to develop everything and open up the valley out east, which is very much an important and proper and the right thing to do, we most certainly need to take a look at our west side, our, our heritage that we have on the square, what we are doing in Inglewood, I think is it, it, we would not be doing our due diligence if we just developed east side without also working and helping develop the west side of town. There has to be a balance there. I think this is a good step in the right direction to do so. Um, so with that said, I need to make an amendment to this, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, as I said before, we have worked on this for approximately a little over a year. In the meantime, we had had a resolution passed in June um, that put a little bit uh, more language into a CID. So, Madam Mayor, I would move to amend Bill Number 19-047 to include a section which would require a cooperative agreement to be executed with, which will require the district to address litter, trash, and cleanup, walkability, and security in the project area. This will, this will ensure the district complies with resolution number 6337, which was passed in June 18, 2018. Okay, there's a motion for, to amend. Is there a second? Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to amend 19047 to specify the requirements outlined in some of the resolution again, the, of 2018. Okay. Resolution number 6. 337, which was passed in, on June 18th of 2018. Um, is there any discussion on the motion? I just, yeah. Madam Mayor, I just don't know where we're, are you at talking about adding a section or amending what's there? Amending what is there and adding this in. Um, okay, what part do you want amended? Well, it's just um, adding. The, it's adding? The, because the, under. Sorry for my phraseology, let's add in. Okay, mm -hmm. so you're adding a section to require the district to address litter and trash, cleanup, walkability, and security in the project area. Correct. Okay. Okay. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Um, anything further, Council Member Perkins? I would uh, encourage my colleagues to vote for the formation of this district. And I want to thank everybody and Tammy, everybody, the whole Inglewood group. My right, guys, why don't you stand up? Let's see. I mean, you guys put in some serious hours, hundreds and thousands of hours. So thank you. Um, okay, there's a, <laughs> Madam City Clerk. Matt. Madam City Clerk, will you please read the bill? Bill number 19047, an ordinance approving the petition for the establishment of the Inglewood Community Improvement District, establishing the district, and making findings and authorizing actions related to the establishment of the district. Second and final reading. Is there any discussion on the bill? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Abstain. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Uh, ordinance passes. Okay, next, uh, a public hearing for the industrial development project for a manufacturing facility and business headquarters. This is a full public hearing. Mr. Scannell. Yes, Mayor and members of the council. Uh, Ronson Manufacturing, the local uh, business, uh, recently acquired the, for the former Kmart building located at uh, the corner of uh, 291 and 24 for highway. They purchased this building to consolidate their operations. They're, they're spread uh, through uh, several different locations throughout Independence. 
Uh, what they intend to do is to repurpose that abandoned uh, retail strip center and big box retailer so that they can uh, put in their manufacturing facility and this will also serve as their local headquarters. Uh, they are seeking chapter 100 tax abatement. The term of, of the tax abatement is 11 years. Um, total project cost is a little over $6.1 million, which will consist of uh, the land buildings, site improvements, as well as personal property uh, to uh, the project. Uh, this project was considered by the Economic Development and Incentive Commission on July 17th. They had recommended uh, approval of, of this uh, Chapter 100 tax abatement. Uh, we have Mark Randall here to answer in, any questions regarding the economic development policy. And again, we have uh, David Martin with Gilmore Bell here. And finally, the applicant is here to answer any questions. Okay, that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. This is a full public hearing. Is there anyone present who would like to speak in support? Good evening again, Mayor Weir and members of the Council. Tom Lesnick, President of the Independence Economic Development Council, offices at 210 West Truman Road. Just as we're excited about the Van Trust project and new development, we should be even more excited about retaining a company with deep roots in independence. Uh, what Ronson is going to do with this facility is they're going to take an outdated retail facility, turn it into a manufacturing facility, continuing to provide great jobs for our community. I would urge your support for this measure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else wishing to speak in support? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Public hearing is closed. Are there any comments or questions from the council? Madam City Clerk. Bill number 19048, an ordinance approving a plan for an industrial development project for a manufacturing facility and business headquarters authorizing the City of Independence, Missouri to issue its taxable industrial development revenue bonds in a principal amount not to exceed $6,150,000 and authorizing certain documents and actions in connection therewith. Second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Ordinance passes. Um, this takes us to our first readings. These will have their first reading tonight and their second reading consideration by the council um, on August the 12th. Is that right? No. <laughs> Two weeks. The 19th. The 19th. Um, we do have one um, emergency this evening that will receive two readings and require a two-thirds majority vote. Madam City Clerk. Bill number 19049, an ordinance authorizing contract with Mega Industries in the amount of $1,039,100 for the construction of a new Truman Road booster station, structure, pumps, piping, and electrical work on the south side of Truman Road, East I-435, and authorizing future minor change orders not to exceed $103,910 and or time extensions, appropriating $145,000 from the water fund net assets. Bill number 19050, an ordinance approving a rezoning from District C2, General Commercial, to District C3, Service Commercial, for property located at 16113 East Truman Road in Independence, Missouri. Bill number 19051, an ordinance amending Chapter 14 of the Independent City Code pertaining to industrial setback standards. Bill number 19052, an ordinance authorizing execution of a cooperative agreement with the Kansas City Area Transit Authority for the federally funded transit stop and pedestrian access improvement project, 7051160101. Bill number 19053, an ordinance amending chapter nine, fire code of the independent city code making necessary revisions. Bill number 19054, an ordinance finding, determining, and declaring the necessity of acquiring general utility easements and temporary construction and grading easements for the Scott Avenue Bridge Replacement Project Number 70111808, authorizing the negotiation of eminent domain proceedings if necessary, approving the plans and specifications for the project, authorizing the use of experts as needed, authorizing and directing the execution of documents and the payment of funds to property owners or others holding property rights in conjunction with the project. Bill number 19055, 
an ordinance partially vacating the existing general utility easement document 2008-E007519 of the Jackson County deed records and located at 3440 South Lee Summit Road, Independence, Missouri 64055. Bill number 19056, an ordinance amending chapter one, article 31, urban redevelopment corporations of the independent city code to update said article to conform with current policies and practice. Madam Mayor, I do have, Madam Mayor, I do yes. have a question on this one. Uh -huh. um, are we gonna be publishing on City 7 these meetings? Because if we're taking something from a published committee, which is the Planning Commission, it's been on City 7 forever. And it's on you know the web and all that stuff. If we're moving something from the Planning Commission and giving it to another group, is the other group going to be televised and put on the city webpage or not? I need to check with on uh, Meg Lewis on that councilwoman and I'll reaffirm with you between now and the second reading. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Bill number 19057, an ordinance authorizing an agreement with the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Water Pollution Control Bargaining Unit, Local Union 53, for the term of July 1, 2019 through June 30th, 2020, and declaring an emergency. Bill number 19057, an ordinance authorizing an agreement with the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Water Pollution Control Bargaining Unit, Local <coughs> Union 53, for the term of July 1, 2019 through June 30th, 2020, and declaring an emergency. Second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Ordinance passes. Madam Mayor, I would like to move that 19058 be read as an emergency. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to read 19058 as an emergency. Um, Councilmember DeLucy, would you like to? 19058 uh, is an ordinance amending Chapter 14 of the Independent City Code pertaining to medical marijuana facilities. Um, ever since we adopted an ordinance a week or so ago that exceeded the boundaries of the Missouri Constitutional Amendment that was passed just a few weeks ago, I have been bombarded with emails, telephone calls from um, patrons of the marijuana as well as prospective sellers of the marijuana, manufacturers of the marijuana, that what we had done violated the Missouri Constitution. I think you got a sort of a flavor of that tonight. Well, that's been my phone for ever since we passed the ordinance. I do not want this city to pay one dime in lawyer fees. This city will in fact be sued because we exceeded the constitutional limitations set forth in the marijuana amendments that went through. As I understand it, these people who are doing the marijuana uh, development, selling, et cetera, must make application to the state and they get points for meeting certain criteria of a city. That window of opportunity for them to apply to the state is now until August 19. If we do not read this as an emergency now, they're gonna miss that window of opportunity or they're gonna to have to say, well, here's the independent city code and it's unconstitutional and here's my lawsuit I just filed challenging the constitutionality of the amendment made by the independent city council. Now, as I understand our liability insurance, attorney fees for unconstitutional actions are not covered by our liability carrier. So any money we pay to lawyers who are my friends and I want them to make money, just not here. Any money we spend is coming from our general fund, from our pocket. It was not well thought out. I accept partial blame for that. That is the reason for my amendment. That is the reason I want it to be read as an emergency. I want to fix it before we get sued. Okay, thank you. Is there any further discussion on the motion, the motion to read this as an emergency? We still will consider the bill, but right now we are voting on the motion to read this as an emergency. Madam Mayor. Yes. 
I, I also believe it's urgent that we act on this. I, I think the longer we put it off, the more problems we're asking for. And uh, I, I have one point of information, and that is, is this the ordinance that has been um, rewritten uh, for us? Is this what we're looking at? Um, because I'm, I'm confused. My, my uh, ordinance that I have even has a sheet from another ordinance as part of it. So it, it's very confusing. It's not the whole ordinance. Yeah. We, we do have in the packet the history of the ordinances as well, I believe, Becky. And so the top cover should be the amended ordinance that should have red lines in I it. I don't have any of that. Okay. So, so is this white sheet, is this what we're voting on? Is this what we're talking yes. about? And, and this has been amended from what Council Member DeLucy had written, right? It has been amended from what was adopted at the last meeting on the yes. 15th. Okay, so the red parts that are on here, is that what we're voting on as well? You will need to adopt the entire ordinance as amended. I learned from the best. I, I haven't had really time to look at this thing. It's just dropped on me a few hours ago. I learned from the best, and I'm against an emergency reading on this. If we could do a special meeting next Monday, that would give okay. us plenty of time or before the study session. It, um, we, we can do a special meeting. Um, there's no problem with calling a special meeting next Monday. We did. I don't feel like we've had that. I understand the concerns that have been expressed tonight. I did not vote for this when it first came before the council because of those concerns. Um, I think we have more information now, but we really have not had much of an opportunity to really review specifically what is being proposed this evening. Um, I am happy to call a special meeting for next Monday. Um, to give us some time to um, review this more thoroughly with our city councilor, um, to make sure that we're clear about what we're what we're doing. Madam Mayor, I move to withdraw my motion to read it as an emergency. Okay, and we will, um, Madam City Clerk, um, hold a special meeting on Monday, uh, the twelfth, to consider um, these amendments. If I may. Yes, I too voted against it because of the last second amendments that we did not have time to and I think that this also falls in that category and would want time to study. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we will read this on um, on Monday the 12th. Madam Mayor. Yes. If I can muddy the waters just even more, yes. please. So after our, our discussion that we had, I was, uh, a constituent reached out to me that, and it is not here, and I don't know where it could be put in, if it would make sense to be put in, but the request was we, we did not um, built in retirement homes. Um, the Groves specifically uh, was named as part of being in that buffer of protection, if you will. So that constituent did reach out to me and asked me why we didn't, and I really did have a good answer. It, things were moving pretty quick, pretty fast, and so I would like to add that into the mix to see if how that might shake out. Okay, we'll uh, review that and get with you on that next week as well. Thank you. Okay. Madam Mayor, I'm yes. so sorry to monopolize tonight. Are we reading it the first time tonight yes. and then a special meeting the second? Yes. Thank you. Thank yes. you. So we can go ahead and have the first reading, Madam Secretary. Thank Clerk. you. Bill number 19058, an ordinance amending chapter 14 of the independent city code pertaining to medical marijuana facilities. Okay, this concludes our agenda for this evening. It takes us to council member comments. I will start on my right with council member, um, council member Doherty. Thank you, Madam Mayor, nothing tonight. Council member Perkins. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, big vote tomorrow, uh, Proposition P. It is something that we've been kicking around here for a little bit, I've been in, um, politics off and on since 1996 and I can tell you that the nature of how uh, municipalities do business uh, how we acquire our sales tax is changing rapidly and it will only change um, even more drastic into the future so I would strongly suggest a, a yes vote on this proposition P. Councilmember Huff? I have nothing this evening. Councilmember DeLucy? I would like um, I would like an update on all the various economic incentives the city has, NIDS, SIDS, 
TIFFs, 353s, whatever else we have, because I don't know all the programs we have, and I'd like to know, I'd like a list of all the economic incentives we've got. I'd like to know, are they active? And like, for example, there's been some talk on Facebook about a TIFF on the square. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't know anything about a TIFF on the square. Well, it turns out, I guess, that before I was on council, one was adopted. I had no knowledge of it. And so I just, I think we all need to have a broad picture of the obligations of the city, and that's what I'm asking for. Uh, yeah, that is actually something when we hired Brian Watson as, uh, pardon me, Brian Kidney. It's been a long night. We're on yeah. almost three hours. Um, when we hired Brian Kidney as our uh, director of finance and administration, uh, one of the things I tasked him with was a cataloging of our economic incentives, um, the active ones, and where those stand relative to their termination and, and their performance. So um, we're in the process of working on that. Great. Uh, and uh, we'll have something forthcoming for the council. And maybe just a short description of what it is. Absolutely. <laughs> OK, thank There's you. There's maps of those on the city website. I <coughs> Um, that can be accessed if you go, I mean, they're a little bit difficult, maybe don't make a lot of logical sense where they're located, but if you go to the same website and look under maps, it shows you the boundaries of all of those special taxing jurisdictions that are there and the economic development policy that the council approved recently that Mark Randall and Tom Lesnick worked closely on really outlines, you know, we didn't list out all the, the um, Incentive programs are available because the development community knows about those more than we do. They're generally um, issued by the state, so, um, but that's a good resource as well, and that's also available online. Just one other thing. Just one other thing, thing Madam Mayor. Um, last time we were here, I did apologize for the remarks made from the dais, and I'd like to repeat that apology. Perhaps you missed it. I apologize for my failure to quickly react as well as for the comments. So I do apologize. Councilmember Robertson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, tomorrow is one of those occasions when we have an opportunity to exercise our right to vote, and I encourage each of you to go out and vote uh, tomorrow. The only thing on the ballot is Proposition P, and in my opinion, it is one of the important uh, things that the city really, really needs that support for the, the animal shelter as well as for increasing the police force and independence. Um, I want to add that, that both of those funds will be supervised by a citizens committee. They will not be supervised by city staff. They will be reporting to the city and the city staff, but they will be overseen just like all of our other taxing uh, jurisdictions have been for the parks and uh, the streets so i encourage you it's it's one of those those important times for the city of independence when we've had a budget deficit the past several years we've had to cut staff we've had to cut uh, a lot of positions and a lot of activities for the city and i hope that if this passes that we can forestall any future cuts for quite a few years especially for for the police so I encourage you to get out and exercise your right to vote tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Van Camp. Nothing tonight, Mayor. Okay. A um, couple comments that I wanted to make. Um, as one of the speakers um, informed us earlier this evening, um, Mayor Quint Lucas has been invited, um, apparently, to come to Independence um, and, and address some of the issues that are challenging to both of our cities along our borders. I was able to have lunch today with Mayor Lucas. Um, we had a wonderful conversation regarding issues related to crime, housing, um, and economic development. And I'm very excited to welcome um, the mayor into our community of elected officials here in Jackson County. And I'm very optimistic that he and I will continue to work together to address those issues that um, really are regional problems that we need to come up with regional strategies to address. Um, in reg regards to um, 40 Highway, I too live very close to the 40 Highway corridor on the south, um, on the west side of town. And you know, there is a great concern about the safety of that area. 
um, right now. We have had um, a couple of meetings I've hosted in our neighborhood, um, one to inform citizens about what Proposition P is about and the other specifically to talk about safety um, issues. There was a presentation from our community um, policing department about some basic, um, what we all maybe consider to be very basic measures that we should be taking to protect our person and our property, but I can tell you, as I'm sure every council member here can, as we canvass our neighborhoods during election times, as we go out and visit with neighbors in our neighborhood, it's astounding the things that you see. People with their front doors hanging open with the keys in the lock, their children, you know, um, playing in the front room, nobody around, nobody come and comes to enter the door. Women who have the garage door open, unloading their groceries and their purses on the back in the back of the car. So I know, you know, we have serious issues and we want to get down to those. But just you know, rem reminding um, our neighbors about these things. These are why crimes occur in our neighborhoods, is cars left running, um, especially in the heat of the summer, the cold of the winter. Um, I mean, they seem like they're, they're common sense, but they bear repeating. We will, I will continue to host meetings in, um, in neighborhoods around the city to address these issues and get more details and get more in depth about what our police department can do with the cooperation of the community to help to address some of these issues that we are seeing. And I can assure you that Mayor Lucas is, um, he has been in office for three days and he's dealing with three homicides. Um, so it's something that is um, very important to him, what he ran on um, and was successful in being elected as mayor of Kansas City. Um, so I assure you those things will continue. Um, we will continue to utilize the resources that we have available. We will continue to put things before voters to help us to increase those resources to meet the needs that you tell us that are important to you. Um, so I do encourage you to go out and vote tomorrow. Um, continue to engage in these neighborhood meetings. I know many council members have them. Um, continue to. Uh, talk with your council members and let them know that the issues that are important to you. Um, Mr. City Manager, is there anything else this evening? Nothing tonight. Okay, we are adjourned.